Shalom, everyone. Shalom. Before I want to begin, I'd like to say uh, how everybody looks so very nice wearing white. I skipped out on wearing my white uh, tuxedo or my suit. Because um, the last time I wore a white tuxedo or a suit, uh, I was compared to the guy from Fantasy Island, the short guy who was saying, Hey, the plane, boss, the plane. Anyway, I these jokes don't do good when we're, uh, when we're fasting. <clears throat> so this message is geared towards uh, the youth, and it's great to see uh, a lot of youth here today. Um, I like to consider myself a youth. Uh, I'm actually a big kid at heart. So um, hopefully I can uh, relate to the, uh, to the young ones today. So many of us can relate to the times when we were teenagers. For some of us, they were the best years. And for others, they taught us important lessons that we hold to high regard today. You see, many don't seem to understand that as teenagers, we start seeing life for what it really is at this time. At this age, teens to teenagers, we start seeing what life really is like. It can be ugly, it can be cruel, it can be very lonely. However, it can be beautiful, it can be inspiring, and it can definitely be amazing. So where am I going with this? We are the choices that we make and that we have to make. I'll say it again. We are the choices that we make and that we have to make. See, the world exposes us. Rather, the world exposes the worst that society can produce for the eyes for our youth. Social media um, and other illicit stuff, to name a few. The mantra that you have to live in the moment, so to speak. This is where our choices come into play. Our choices. You know, they're not just for adults. We make them every day. We make good ones, we make bad ones. But really the choices that we make starts when you're in your youth. This is where our choices come into play. When we make choices by ourselves, they are simply choices. Weighing the choices that we have and the impact it will have on you in the future is called a decision. It's a decision that you have to live with. When you walk with God and when He guides your steps, there's no fear to move ahead in life because we know that all good things work together for the good for those who love God. Those who are called according to His purpose. That's just it. That's the answer. For all of those who are called according to His purpose. So young, young boys and girls, young men and women, you guys are here today and online, and whoever is listening, you guys are here because you guys have a purpose. You guys were called according to God's purpose. You are here because... You have a bright future. You do not see that yet. You are called to do many great things. And you are in the right place. Where to begin. Where to start. What to do. How to find out if it's you or not. It's a long life journey. You see, to live a life in abundance, it is, a, it is important to live faithfully in God's teachings. You want to live in abundance, you want to have great things, you want to have great blessings. It's important to live faithfully to God. His teachings must be a part of your everyday life. To be successful in life has really nothing to do with money. And I'm not going to go into that because that's actually another topic for itself. Although it makes things to acquire pretty easy. But I can tell you for a fact, money does not buy faithful love. It definitely doesn't buy you happiness. And it most definitely does not get you the salvation that Yeshua HaMashiach paid His life for, for you and for me. Nothing can compare 
to the true riches of the glory of our God. A great way to get started, especially for our youth, a great way to get started in this walk is to tap into your God-given talents for the purpose of serving. That's right, for the purpose of serving. And you may not see this and you may not know this, but all of you, even all of the, of the adults in here today, all of you have been blessed with God-given talents. And our purpose for it is to use it to serve God. And the message for the children is, what is, what is your God-given talent? For most of us, we find this out years ahead in our lives. Some of us don't want to know what the gifts are that we have, that God has blessed us with. But it is truly important to, to find the strength, to find the talent that you have and serve God. And you will know, you will know the talent that you have. Because it's going to seem as everything, all the stars, everything aligns for you. When everything you see aligns for you, it is then that you are using your gifts for a greater purpose because God called you according to His purpose. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4-7, through 7, it states, Now there are various kinds of gifts, but the same Ruach, the same Spirit. There are various kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are various kinds of working, but the same God who works in all things, in all people. But to each person is given the manifestation of the Ruach for the benefit of all. Serving by far is the greatest gift and reverence that you can show to God. I'd like to give you a personal example of mine. When I was, uh, I believe, 11 or 12 years old, <clears throat> I, had a, I had, at one point in my life, I had a lot of friends. And I had one particular friend who was, who was off. And, but, you know, I never, I never shied away from people who were different because I am different myself. Um, so I reached out to him and I would call him and every time I would call him to hang out and to play, his father would say, he's not here, he's busy. He's not here, he's busy. He's not here, he's busy. Then, you know, I finally gave up calling him. I'm like, well, he's too busy to hang out. So then one day he calls me and he says, hey, Brian, what's up? I'm like, whoa. Hey, what's up? How you doing? He's like, hey, I, I just, um, I got this thing and I want you to, uh, I think it'd be great for you. Uh, it, 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 the, the event, it starts at 6 o'clock, and it was like in the summer in July, in the, in the early 1990s, and it was a hot day, and my friends were all getting ready to go into the pool and to hang out and enjoy the summer heat with a cold splash of, of, of water from the pool. And he said, no, man, I got something great. Please, okay, can you take my invitation? I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm going to go home. I'm going to get something to eat, and then I'll let you know. And then I went home, and I told my mother. I'm like, hey, Mom, I'm, I'm going to go to the pool, but I got this crazy call from a kid named Anthony, my friend. And he said he wanted me to, to join him in somewhere. And she said, what is it? Well, I don't know, but he sounded pretty excited. Um, and, he said, and he had finished the conversation with, God bless you, man. I hope you can come. And my wife, my mother, my mother's eyes were like, "You have to go." I'm like, "But I'm gonna go hang out with my friends. You have no idea. I've never had this many friends before, and I'm not gonna pass it up just so I can go somewhere where I'm. Not, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm gonna do." But my mother was, my, my, my mother. It's like your parents know. You know, this is something that God is sending to my son. My mother said, "Drop everything. Go with him." I can iron your clothes, you could be ready in 15 minutes. So that's what I did. And at 12 years old, it was the first, <clears throat> it was the first service that I had ever attended and I had learned about God. I was called for a purpose. 
And so are all of you. You are called for a greater purpose, for the purpose to serve Him, to serve God. Serving by far is the greatest gift and reverence you can show to God. You can serve God. You can serve God with your gifts and with your talents. You can serve Him with... You can serve Him with singing. You can serve Him with music. You can serve Him with speaking. You can serve Him with dance. You can serve Him with anything that you dream about. Because God already knows. He knows you. He knew you way before your mother and your fathers knew you. And who do you serve? You serve God, but what's the work? What's the job? What's the duty? It's to serve His people. Serving in charity, serving in worship, serving in ministry are all the good examples of serving and using your greatest gift for God. See, knowledge and wisdom, knowledge and wisdom, being smart, it comes through serving. That's the actual paradox. The more you serve, the more you learn. The more you serve, the more knowledge, the more wisdom you obtain. Serving will become a lifelong purpose and a true purpose for your life. And I will end with this. In Proverbs 3, it is stated that it's the, the author is King Solomon for his son. But I, 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 I'll say this here for all the children. And Proverbs 3 starts off like this. My child, do not forget my teaching. But let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and shalom and peace they will add to you. Let kindness and truth never leave you and bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Then you will gain favor and a good name in the, in the eyes of God and of man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to God. And He will make your path straight. Don't be wise in your, own under, in, your, in your eyes. Don't be wise in your own eyes, rather. Fear Adonai and turn away from bad. Turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and a refreshment to your bones. So everyone in here, children included, you already have the power you need within you to achieve everything that you can dream of. Tap into it and watch your life change and make every day your favorite day. To God be the glory forever. In Yeshua's name, Gemar Hatimatova. Amen. Amen.